Welcome to our lecture online. Next, we need to figure out the luminosity of the star in order to be able to calculate the absolute magnitude of a star. So how do we determine the luminosity? And it turns out the HR diagram. So on the HR diagram, on the horizontal axis, we have temperature and spectral class. Now temperature for O-type stars reaches about 30,000 Kelvin. For B, it's about uh, well, let's say about 20,000 Kelvin. For A, it's about 10,000 Kelvin. For F, it's about, about maybe 8,000 Kelvin, about 6,000 for G, about 4,000 for K, and about 3,000 for M. So this is the temperature in Kelvin of these types of stars, and there's, of course, a little wiggle room in there. So what we do is we use the color filters to determine the the, uh, the difference between the blue filter and the visible filter. We then line that up to calculate the type of star we're dealing with, the surface temperature, we then calculate the surface temperature, and then we go to the HR diagram. And for the sun, we'd say it's a G2 type star, and so therefore it has one times the luminosity of the sun. Makes sense. But what about a star like Sirius? Well, Sirius was an A type star with a surface temperature right around 10,000 Kelvin, and we then determined from the HR diagram that that star has a luminosity of about 25 times the luminosity of the sun. Of course, we can also use the Stefan Boltzmann's law that calculates that the amount of uh, the luminosity is equal to the emissivity times the sigma constant times the surface area times the temperature to the fourth power. And of course, the surface area that can be written as 4 pi r squared times the temperature to the fourth power. So we can calculate the luminosity based upon the estimated radius of the star and based upon the calculated temperature. So notice that these values here are calculated using the concept of the Stefan Boltzmann's law, the presumed size of the star based upon where it belongs in the main sequence on the HR diagram. And all we do is read off the spectral type from the B minus V color index. Then we come up we hit the main sequence, we do a small adjustment because obviously it's not exactly along the line, but it's kind of a distribution on the line to see what kind of star we're dealing with, and then we read off the luminosity of the star. So it's essentially a relationship between where in the main sequence a star is and what the brightness or the luminosity of the star is with some modifications, some adjustments, and that once we have that, we're now ready to calculate the absolute magnitude of the star. And obviously, once we measure the apparent magnitude and we compare it to the absolute magnitude, we should be able to calculate the distance. So next, how do we calculate the absolute magnitude of a star once we know the luminosity? So stay tuned and we'll show you how to do that. It's a lengthy process, isn't it? Yes. <laughs> yeah, but that's not a good way to do it. Guessing? Guessing is no. No, no, no. We want to try to get it as accurate as possible. 